How do you know that you're on the right type of program for you? So whether you are a runner, a cyclist, a swimmer, a multi-sport athlete, you've set yourself a goal, multiple goals for the year, whether it's getting past an injury, whether it's getting back to your best, whether it's podium. How do you know the program that you've just selected or you're looking to select for yourself or the program that you're on right now is the right one for you? Well, first and foremost, guys, everyone has their own individual thresholds for training. Everyone has their own tolerances to work. Working with within endurance performance for decade plus now, working with men, women, working with professionals all the way down to beginners, working from in running, working in cycling, working in swimming, working in a triathlon. There is no set formula. And the community that we live in, it's very easy for us to see what somebody else is doing and think that that is probably going to be, that that, that looks like it could be the right thing for me. I'm going to drag and drop that into my lifestyle. What we see is fallout from this type of behavior. We see a lot of people struggling very, very quickly from having this type of behavior because through no fault of their own, because of the lack of guidance, the lack of understanding, it's poor training load management. And that is probably the key to this conversation today, guys, is understanding that training load management is one of the most critical elements to any successful training program, especially when it comes to an endurance uh, coaching program. So, you know, when you're looking to build up high volumes or high intensities of running, cycling, swimming, trying to manage that amount of training load, so the amount of volume that you're working out, the amount of, uh, you know, sets and reps that you're performing, we've got to understand that your body is going to have a certain level of fitness currently that can, and then it's only going to be able to tolerate so much work before it starts to compensate, starts to break down. What we have got to be doing from the get go when it, when it's terms, in terms of establishing a, the right program for you is the fact that. You may start off with a, with a certain framework, but you've got to be open to the fact that that framework that you're, you're starting off with may not be the right fit. Your understanding, your perceptions that, you you know, if some people are up on the track, you know, are, are running or, or some people down you know, at the local bike club, they're riding, running five, six days a week, you know, and they're doing upwards of 100K, you know, 100K running a week in total volume, or, you know, they're riding up to two, three, 400K a week of, of riding. As soon as you start throwing those types of metrics around, those types of numbers around, there is a lack, or there's almost a lack of uh, an, an innocence or an ignorance towards what that training load is going to look like on top of your current lifestyle. And one of the most important things we can do as your coaches and as a coach personally is is understand quickly what that individual's tolerances are going to be. Now, when it comes to strength and conditioning, is that sometimes it can be quite easy. It's easier to do so. You know, when we first start working with anyone, we, we look at screening them, testing them. We want to look at what their kind of levels of confidence are in their body, levels of conditioning in their key muscle groups, what their current range of motion, you know, what their confidence are around jumping, landing, moving a barbell, etc. We can quickly establish what those levels of tolerance are and how, com- you know, how confident and comfortable they are. That allows us to then start prescribing appropriately the right exercises, the right kind of the, the right training load. So we make sure that they're not lifting you know, excessive amount of weight. We're, we're starting off at body weight. We're building that up to the point where they are starting to throw weight around. But that can take weeks, if not months. When it comes to running, cycling, swimming, etc., it's very easy for us just to kind of dump a load of work on top of people and on top of ourselves and just go, yep, I'm just going to start doing four sessions, five sessions, six sessions, double sessions a day and just see how I pull up. And the scary thing is, and the wonderful thing maybe, is the body can tolerate can tolerate that for a time. But there's this erosion that's going on underneath there in terms of an erosion of your energy availability. There's an erosion in your physical capabilities. You're building up a deficit in your body where your body is potentially, because of the unknown weaknesses in certain muscle groups, the unknown uh, bike position that you're, you're working with, the unknown kind of understanding around your gait, you know, your running gait. So you're, you're losing that position when you're in your running. So you're then starting to compensate. You're starting to accumulate this fatigue and this stress in your body. That just continues to build up in the background. And it can take weeks, months, years even for this to rear its ugly head. But when it does, it can take you away from the sport that you want to participate in more uh, for, for lengths of time that you just do not want to kind of even, even consider. And it's simply because you're following a program that is has been has been overloading you for too long. Because right at the beginning, there wasn't this this ability to to make adjustments where necessary. When you're starting off on a program, there's nothing wrong with bringing in a program that gets you running, riding, swimming four, five times a week. What those sessions look like definitely matters. 
how much volume you are working at across those across that week in, in those sessions matters. We want to be considering what type of job you have, what type of uh, family you are responsible for, what type of lifestyle that you live. Do you commute? Are you travelling a lot? Do you work from home? Uh, is it a high stress job you you're you, you're in at the moment? Is it you know do you have a lot of other responsibilities in and around your lifestyle that you have to manage? To simply put a template, a program, or an, an expectation on yourself by following a program is negligent if it's being prescribed by a coach, and it's ignorant if, it, if you're prescribing it to yourself. Because what you're not considering is how, what that training load is going to do on top of the current training load of life. We have to consider this because, again, the body will break down over time simply because you're trying to, you know, burn the ca- to, you're burn, trying to burn too many candles. You're not put, you're simply not putting in, you know, your energy output far exceeds your energy input. If your sleep's not there, your recovery's not there, your nutrition's not there, your if your strength and conditioning isn't there in terms of making sure that you are trying to do all of this on a on a on a on sandy foundations. You've got obvious areas of weakness, dysfunctions in your body, imbalances from previous injuries. You're going to break in time. So how do we establish this threshold? Well, let's start logically, right? No matter where we're at, we want to establish right in the beginning where you're at. We talked about the strength and conditioning. We talked about this in the past where we want to establish this baseline. Your, your levels of mobility, your levels of body weight strength, your levels of maximal strength, your confidence and competency in agility, in plyometric exercises, in producing speed, producing power. We want to be able to see all those aspects. Yes, we want to see your, your levels of experience with moving dumbbells, kettlebells, barbells, because we want to put external load through the body, because this is how we create more stimulus, we create more muscle tissue, we strengthen your tendons, your ligaments, etc. But how do we do that with your running, your riding, your swimming? Well, similarly, are we, what are we screening for? Are you being, are, have you been, are there tests in place within the first few weeks of starting a program? Are you establishing these kind of thresholds? You have to. There's no doubt about it. And whether you've been off for six weeks or you've been off for six years, coming into a, into a new program, one of the most important things you could be doing is establishing a baseline. Where are your current thresholds of training? But not just in testing your VO2, not just testing your, your FTP, not just testing your 400 meter efforts or 1600 meter efforts in the water. We want to understand what your current thresholds of training load on your lifestyle. So we start off with three or four days a week on top of a couple of sessions of S&C. We integrate that into your current lifestyle because we've had a conversation around what that your busy lifestyle looks like. This is something that maybe you have never done in the past and up until this point, you've been doing six days a week hard, but you're also coming into this program somewhat injured or having never really felt like you've, you've, you've seen your potential because potentially you've always been overtraining. You've always been pushing it too hard for too long with too little. When you start a new program, let's establish a baseline. Can you tolerate four runs, four rides, four swims, whatever your sport is, or a mix of, if you're following a multi-sport program, on top of two to three S&C sessions, on top of the extra work potentially we need to be doing to make sure your body's in a good place, on top of life, work life, etc. Do we to- Can we tolerate that? What do I? And then we start to evaluate that on a week-to-week basis. What do your energy levels look like, feel like? Do you feel like your body's recovering come the end of the week after accumulating all that work? Are you ready to go again the following week? Are you injury-free, niggle-free? Do you feel like you're turning up to your sessions ready to, to perform, to train? Or are you kind of in that haze where you're kind of just going through the motions? Do you feel like you're, there's a level of dist- distraction right now in your work life, family life, social life? As you start to develop, you start to understand that actually you, you're going to get to a place where you start, we can add more, five sessions a week, six sessions a week. You know, we're training. Nothing wrong with training six days a week. Absolutely not. But what does that training load look like? For some people... Getting up to 50 to 75k of running a week is enough on top of everything else they've got going in their life. Some people have the ability to be able to go to 100, 150, 200k a week of running, but they probably will have a lifestyle that allows them to do that. They, are, they have built a life for themselves that allows them to have that, that level of recovery, that, that level of kind of um, managing their bandwidth where they can they have their area able to prioritize that time. Similarly, if you're, if you're a cyclist or a swimmer or a multiple athlete, do you have the capacity to work to those higher levels of volume, higher levels of intensity? Or do we need to strip things back and go, right, actually, you are operate, you need to operate, you actually operate best with three sessions of that, three sessions of this, and three sessions of this. 
However, when the, so as a result, we're now going to have to dial in on those sessions and make sure the quality of every single one of those sessions is as good as possible. That you're turning up to every one of those sessions and really maximizing your time in the water, on the bike, on the run. I don't believe a lot of you are having these types of week-to-week conversations. And as a result, you're just going through the motions. You're just ticking the boxes on training peaks and your, on your spreadsheets, on your PDFs, whatever you're working from. And as a result, you're just slowly eroding away at your energy levels because you've, you're, you're setting an expectation based on somebody else's lifestyle, somebody else's thresholds. Understand, guys, when you're watching these competitions online, I'm speaking from a lot of experience, every single person we work with has a different tolerance, different thresholds to work. But they can all be turning up at the same event and performing at the same levels of intensity, but their bodies have been built upon different levels of work because of the other life stresses they have, because of all the other um, responsibilities they have, because of their, their, their previous injuries, potentially. Maybe they have a lower tolerance in their hamstrings, in their knees, in their quads, in their back, whatever. And that maybe is something that could change over time. But right now, there is a tolerance there. But it's being held accountable to that. And it can be quite an uncomfortable conversation to have as a coach with an athlete, with a client, with a member, with, you, with yourself. Because whatever you think you're capable of, whatever that is based off, a younger version of yourself, a version of yourself that had a hell of a lot more time to themselves, was able to be more selfish, a healthy version of yourself where you were injury free at that time. And now fast forward 10 years or wherever you're at right now where actually there's a, it's a different narrative. We need to understand that you have a different tolerance, a different threshold. But having the maturity to under, to grasp that, to then work with that can give you so much power because you, you're you no longer niggly. You're, no, you're, no, you're, you're starting to see your, the progress within your sessions and what was the answer we've removed one of us one of the days of training you've now got two days of, of recovery a week why because work is work is dominates your life and that you've got to find that space but you're okay actually you can confidently say to your teammates or your to other members of the club or running club or cycling club swimming club whatever you're members of and say yeah actually no i only train four days a week five days a week because that works really well for my body i'm, I'm remaining injury free i feel like I, i've got good energy all all you know all year round that is something you should be super confident in saying, and not feeling like you have to be one of the you know one of the one of the crowd you know a sheep kind of thing where you're like you have been like you have to do six and a half days of training a week because that's what the everybody else is doing. Remember who all those other people are. All those other people are either bloody professionals or people who are always in pain, always riddled with injury, always struggling with disordered eating in the background, poor energy availability. They don't have great relationships with their nutrition, recovery, with, with, with their training. You know, you've got to go beneath the surface and go, what is going to work for me? Because we're going to reinforce it as your coaches. We have to. Like, that is our responsibility. Like, we have to go, right, I know what this person wants. I know what we could be doing to get them to that place. But is is it appropriate? Does it fit with this person's lifestyle, with their tolerances and their physical and their physical abilities, with their levels of energy that they can give? It's something you have to earn. If you want to get to those higher volumes of work, when you're when you're you're comparing yourself with these these elite individuals, they've likely earned the right to get there. They've put the work in, they've built up this tolerance over time. And that's how you that's the secret. You layer, layer, layer. But right now, guys, give yourself a break and be understand that there is a, everyone has a different tolerance. We all have to individualize our programming based upon our lifestyles. What that, that what that when we when we're prescribing our running programming, our cycling programming, our multisport programming, we are basing it off that individual that we're working with. Who are they? What do they do in their life? What demands do they have in their life? What stresses have they, are they having to deal with, cope with right now? That is how we prescribe our, our our training from our strength conditioning all the way through to our run coaching, to our cycling coaching, to our multi-sport coaching. We, that is how we prescribe work because it's the only logical, safe way of doing it to build consistency, to build resiliency and to have that eventual long-term performance. All right, guys. Speak to you soon.